Welcome back to MPT. Today I'm going to talk about three antenna types that are exceptionally useful for your phased array development. Antennas are absolutely fundamental elements of any successful phased array. Be sure to watch to the end and then download my white paper linked below. In it you'll find several examples of the antennas and a comparison of the benefits and drawbacks of all three types. Get your product to market faster with a custom phased array solution from MPT Corp. I'm gonna talk about three antenna types that are very useful for phased arrays, as you will see. The first antenna type is a slot antenna. I've got one here that I can show you. This is a typical slot antenna. The characteristics are that it has a, a, a section here that is metallic, it's often printed on a circuit board, though the circuit board doesn't need to be there. You can machine the slot into, for instance, aluminum, that's done very often. And it has a, a, a tapered slot, as you can see. The metallization pattern is such that it starts out as a very narrow section here, very narrow slot, and then as you uh, approach the end of the antenna, the slot tapers to a very wide uh, opening and eventually it terminates at the edge of the tapered slot antenna. And the purpose of this is to transition the electromagnetic waves as smoothly as possible from a slot mode into a propagating electromagnetic mode. And often the width of this type of antenna is a half a wavelength at the operating frequency of the antenna. And the length of the slot, the longer the length of the slot, in general terms, the longer the length of this slot, the wider the bandwidth of the antenna, though there are ways to get wide bandwidth, even with short uh, uh, taper lengths. Additionally, you can have a exponential temp tapers, as this antenna is, or you can have linear tapers or, st or just straight tapers. There is a slew of different taper types that you could use but the exponential taper is very, very popular. The benefits of this particular antenna type is that it's possible to get a very wide impedance bandwidth match, a match to 50 ohms, over a very wide frequency range. It's possible to get uh, two to one, three to one, and even 10 or 20 to one bandwidths out of these types of, of antennas. So they're very popular for wideband, systems. Um, in addition, they have very stable or very well-formed radiation patterns, uh, which is important for uh, your phased array. Um, a typical use example for this particular type of antenna is a phased array for radar systems, uh, both airborne as well as ground-based and ship-based. This type of antenna has been proposed for use and, and, and used in wireless systems. So this and, and, and this antenna actually, actually was used uh, for some uh, TV applications. So uh, these types of antennas are very useful and are used in many, many different types of applications. Another type of antenna that's very popular for phased arrays is a patch antenna. And this is an example of a patch antenna array. As you can see, there are four elements in this patch antenna array. Um, some characteristics of the patch antenna is that it has these patches of metal that exist on the, on the top of a substrate material. And uh, they are chosen, their size, the size of these patches are chosen to resonate at the desired frequency of operation of the antenna. So in other words, these dimensions here, the width and length of these antenna elements must be chosen and designed very carefully. Um, in addition, these antennas ex are fabricated on top of a substrate. Uh, this is a particularly thin uh, substrate for the frequency that this antenna is operating at. But typically, the substrate's uh, thickness is chosen to optimize the efficiency of the antenna. Thicker substrates tend to be uh, better efficiency, uh, better, uh, better uh, efficiency for radiating energy and uh, thinner substrates tend to be less efficient for radiating energy from these patch arrays. Another important characteristics 
the characteristic of patch antennas is where you feed the patch antenna from your transmission line. This one is fed with a micro strip line and as you can see the feed point is inset into the element and that's for matching the impedance of the end of the patch and uh, and for proper operation uh, you can feed these antennas from the back side it's very popular to do that um, and there are just a dozens of ways that have been developed for feeding these uh, these patch antennas um, the the use case for these is they're used in 5g systems they're used in radar systems they're used in uh, in uh, remote sensing applications this is a very popular antenna type for phased arrays. Um, and uh, the next type of antenna that I'm gonna talk about is the spiral antenna. This is an example of a spiral antenna that we developed here at MPT. All of those antenna types, by the way, we developed here at, M at MPT. And uh, this particular one uh, was developed for a small phased array uh, that was used for a satellite application. And a spiral antenna is characterized by having spiral arms that start in the middle of the antenna and spiral around. So there's two arms in this particular antenna, spiral around all the way out to the edge of the antenna. But you, not, you can have more than two arms. You can have four arms if you desire. Some people have made spiral antennas with four arms. We like using two arm spiral antennas. And they're also characterized by having a, a ground plane often behind the, the, the back end of the spiral antenna. And often that, that back uh, short, as a back short ground plane, is chosen to be approximately a quarter wavelength from the face of the, of the spiral to the, to the ground plane. And then there are various metals that can be used as supports for your spiral antenna. Um, the main, uh, well, there are several attractive feature this, uh, features of this antenna, but the, the two, type, two features that are so attractive for this antenna are the fact that it can be made to operate over a very wide bandwidth. Um, another feature is that it can be made to have very good axial ratio for circularly polarized electromagnetic waves. And that's very important for satellite applications, a spiral antenna, phase array we did last year for one of our customers uh, used a spiral antenna, a different one than this, but it used a spiral antenna array. Um, and uh, other applications for spiral antennas include communication systems, um, not just uh, satellite communication systems, but other types of communication systems and, and sometimes for radar systems. Thanks for watching. Next, download the white paper link below. In it, you'll find additional information on the three antenna types that we've discussed. Also, there's information comparing the benefits and the drawbacks of each in a table that summarizes that information. Also, click on the link to my trip Lee paper where I show details on how to design slot antennas. If you're looking for an antenna for your phased array or a phased array for one of your systems, then consider us. You can visit our website at mptcorp.com. Until next time, this is Rick Sturdivant with MPT.